Hey, what's up all you cool birds and birdies? I'm Carol Baskin, and today we're going to talk about extraction. Extraction! Extraction occurs any time that coffee is in contact with water. So let's say I'm water, and I'm coming into contact with coffee. Extraction occurring, extraction not occurring, occurring, not occurring, occurring, not occurring. You can manipulate your coffee extraction at home. What I mean by that is you can speed up the rate of extraction or you can slow it down. So here's a fun fact for your next Zoom cocktail party. 30% of coffee is soluble in water. But of that 30%, science tells us that 18 to 22% dissolution is what tastes best. So why is this important for you to know? When it comes to coffee, you want it as sweet as possible. That's the goal. That's why you want to manipulate the rate of extraction of your coffee. For instance, if you have a pour over, it's not sweet enough, you can just change your grind in order to get more sweetness out. Or you have a French press, you can add agitation to increase that rate of extraction in the same amount of time. Your main barometer for determining extraction at home is going to be your taste buds and I'm gonna go over taste in a different video. The following are variables that you can control to influence the rate of extraction of your coffee at home. We have water temperature, grind size, brew ratio, and agitation. I'm gonna be discussing how these variables affect rate of extraction. Talking about extraction can get confusing for a lot of people, and I wanna keep it as simple as possible. When I talk about the variables that can affect your extraction, what I'm really saying is when you change a variable, you can increase the rate of extraction or you can decrease the rate of extraction. So imagine your pour over or your French press right here. Use the same recipe day in, day out, but now we wanna change it. Let's make a second one. Use the exact same recipe, meaning same number of pulses or leave it in the French press for the same amount of time, but now we're gonna change one of the variables. And by changing that variable, we're gonna increase the rate of extraction or we're gonna decrease the rate of extraction. So first variable is water temperature. If you increase your water's temperature, extraction is gonna speed up. If you lower your water temperature, extraction is gonna decrease. Next up, we have grind size. By making your grind size finer, you're gonna increase the rate of extraction. When you make your grind size coarser, you're gonna decrease the rate of extraction. Brew ratio is a tricky one. So I'm gonna break brew ratio down into two separate variables. You have your coffee dose and you have your water dose. Let's say you make your pour over and the only thing you change for this second pour over is your coffee dose. If you increase the size of your coffee dose, you're gonna decrease your rate of extraction. I'm gonna say that again. Increase the size of your coffee dose, you decrease your rate of extraction. If you reduce your coffee dose, you increase your rate of extraction. And I'll come back to that in a second because I know that one can get a little confusing. The other part of brew ratio is your water dose. If you increase the amount of water that you use, you're going to increase your rate of extraction. If you decrease the amount of water you use, you're gonna decrease that rate of extraction. And then finally we have agitation. And what I mean by agitation is physically getting into your slurry of coffee and water and stirring it or taking your pour over device and shaking it. If you add agitation or increase the amount of agitation, you're gonna increase your rate of extraction and vice versa, by taking away agitation or reducing the amount of agitation, you're gonna decrease your rate of extraction. Now I'm gonna give you some fun exercises to try at home so you can taste how these variables affect your cup of coffee. First. Water temperature. I don't recommend playing around with water temperature too much. If you're heating your water on your stovetop, I do recommend getting an electric probe thermometer so you can be consistent with your water temperature. In general, your goal for water temperature is 195 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't have a thermometer, my recommendation is take your water to a rolling boil and then wait three to five minutes before ma making your pour over. If you wanna experiment with water temp, try making a pour over with water that is just off the boil and then make another one with water that you've waited three to five minutes off the boil for. Next up, we have grind size. This one's really easy. Go ahead and make your pour over, your French press or your aero press, then make another one and make the grind either finer or coarser. Next up is coffee dose. 
Now, I said I was gonna revisit this because I know this one can get a little tricky because it has an inverse relationship to extraction. If you increase your dose of coffee in your pour over, your extraction rate is going to go down. Why is this? Well, think about it this way. You've just added more coffee into your filter, thus giving more work for water to do in the same amount of time. Water's not gonna work any harder regardless of how much coffee you put in your filter. So if you're gonna play around with coffee dose, my recommendation is make your pour over and then make another one and increase your coffee dose size by five to seven grams. Or conversely, you can decrease your coffee dose size by five to seven grams and see what happens to the flavors in your cup. All right, the other side of brew ratio was your water dose. So this one's really easy to play with. Go ahead and make your pour over. And then for the next one, use the same recipe, but for that last pulse of water, go ahead and add 50 to 70 grams of water and see what happens. Finally, agitation. If you're making a pour over, my recommendation to play here is I want you to agitate your bloom. So you add a little bit of water for that bloom, go ahead and stir that up and then continue as normal according to your recipe. You should have a discernible taste difference in that final cup. If you're using a French press or AeroPress and you already stir at the beginning, go ahead and add another stir right around one minute and see what that does to your final cup. My recommendation is stir for about 10 seconds and see what happens. As I said, a video all about taste is coming, but just remember, your north star of coffee brewing is sweetness. You wanna get the most sweetness out of your cup possible and achieve that perfect balance between sweetness and acidity. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Carol Baskin. Okay. I got straight face. Not occurring. Occurring? Not occurring. Occurring? Not occurring. You get it, right? You get it all the time. Yeah. From the top? <laughs> Water. Hey, what's up all you cool birds and birdies? I'm Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Oh.